Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, what will be general setup? Suppose we are given an associative algebra, usually countable dimensional, let's say all complex numbers, linear functional, and usually it vanishes on commutators, and an element of my algebra. Uh, so, in, in such case, one can uh, construct a series in one auxiliary variable t, uh, namely, you consider you raise your element to power zero, one, two, three, etc., and make a generative series of it. Uh, Formula we can write as a kind of sum of uh, geometric progression as a, a kind of trace applied to one over minus one t times a, the t will be considered as a central variable. Yeah, yeah so that's a question to study. And uh, in general, is this really no sense to study all linear functions? There are too many of them. For countable dimensional, we will get those spaces uncountable dimension. So you should restrict something uh, uh, to some reasonable constructible class of functions which you can describe with find too many words and uh, see what you see as a result. Okay. So what is the basic example? It's a commutative case. Uh, so this is confluence and homological mirror symmetry. It's related to mirror symmetry. Uh, uh, so the, uh, let's do something very general. Suppose A is algebra function with smooth uh, a fine algebraic variety of certain dimension M. And suppose we are given an algebraic volume element uh, top the top degree form and the homology class in the middle homology of, of this variety. Then we have a function from algebra to complex numbers, namely any element goes to the form. If you multiply it by a volume element and integrate over come out of class. Yeah, so we see it's composition of two maps. maps. So from algebra, you go to uh, top gram homology of this fine variety. Namely, you multiply uh, a by volume element, get top degree form, which is automatically closed, so it defines some homology class. And then we get a um, inter, uh, map from homology to complex numbers, which will be integration of a com integer homology class gamma, which you choose. And uh, if you're interested in mirror symmetry photoric final varieties, this is some kind of main series to consider. And it's contract, it's essentially the series which we have in uh, this framework. That algebra is algebra of Laurent polynomials, uh, variety is uh, multiplicative torus, volume is uh, element is a product of d log divided by 2 pi to power m, and, and uh, uh, Integration cycles is numbers with absolute value equal to one. So this function is it's actually a pick a constant term of the series of, 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 of Laurent polynomial. And the genetic series will be some uh, nice uh, uh, holonomic function satisfies the linear algebraic differential equation, the integer monogram, and so on. Yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot to say that for mirror symmetry, if you consider toric final variety, it's described by reflexive polyhedron in n dimensional lattice. And this element which you choose is just some of monomials based on the vertices of this reflexive polyhedron. Okay. So, what we do in non commutative geometry? The replacement of drum homology is periodic cyclic homology. It sounds too periodic. I just recall this a definition, but we will not use this definition at all, so it's just look at this as a picture. Uh, so if you have unit of source chip algebra of the amplitude of characteristic zero, then you write periodic cyclic complex. Uh, these differentials consist of two parts going to the left and to the right. And so this uh, there are two uh, components of the differential. It's uh, usual differential and Hochschild complex. Uh, and con differential, uh, which goes in opposite direction, just execute once in some order and makes certain sum, and some uh, squares is, uh, square of the sum is zero. So we can calculate this periodic set homology, but you calculate homology in, uh, in infinite product, not in infinite sums of terms. Okay. So, what are basic facts about this uh, periodic set homology? If my algebra is algebra function of smooth affine variety, 
And then we think it's isomorphic to drum co-modors in this variety. So it's finite dimensional. And in fact, uh, Boris Hagen and Boris Sigan uh, work out that uh, still some, something similar works for singular variety. It gets to finite dimensional, uh, it's called crystalline homology. You imagine if you have singular variety, you embed it in some, some affine space, consider formal neighborhood, and consider drum homology formal neighborhood. So you calculate topological homology variety. Uh, and the next story is algebra depends on parameters uh, and uh, parameters uh, are spectrum of some, let's say, again, smooth affine variety, okay, could be modern non smooth. Uh, uh, so it means that, uh, so what does it mean algebra depend on parameters? You have just one algebra uh, or associative algebra of big center, which is algebra function on this variety, and then one can um, localize at any point, get a small algebra, get family of. Algebras. Then we have a canonical flat connection with this family of periodic psychic homology. It was discovered by Ezra Getzer many years ago by kind of uh, brute force calculation. And this days is better understood as color of some uh, calculus uh, of operation on Hoshi uh, homology and cohomology with some little disk operas. But still, the formals are pretty involved. And I, I will not use or write any for explicit formal at all. We will see. Uh, okay, so this is uh, 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 drum homology. Now we need integration cycles. And Alan Kohn proposed many years ago what is non commutative geometry integration cycles. The things which are called even or odd summable free modules. It's some gadget. Mm -hmm. So the uh, odd free volume, uh, this, it's actually it simply defined odd free volume modules and even free volume modules. It's some representation of your algebra to bounded operators in the countable dimensional, uh, countable generated complex field of space with some essentially splitting of the space and direct sum of two subspaces or can say have operators square equal to identity in this self adjoint. So the eigenvalue plus one and minus one. And such it, it's almost compute um, this uh, this algebra. Uh, so consider any representation of any element of the algebra. If you take commutative, you get a compact operator. And in even model, you get another uh, operator square equal to one, uh, and you can use the Z and can use the representation. Yeah, so get uh, something, and uh, uh, this is not sufficient yet to define. Um, Integration cycles will need to be some notion of summability. Let's choose some real parameter p from one to infinity. Uh, it sounds like dimension of integration cycles. And uh, you put the conditions that all these commutators, which are compact operators, in fact belong to Shutton ideals. So it means that this can see the trace of KK cross uh, the positive definite operators traced to this power p over two, that will be trace plus. And if you get the summability, then uh, for some p, then we can uh, pair it with uh, periodic psychic homology. I just recall in periodic psychic homology, if you get a class, you get infinite sequence of elements in terms of powers. The algebra not completed. And uh, when you get summability, you should pick elements sufficiently far to the left and uh, pair it in some way with integration cycles. So the pairing is given by a certain formula. We take trace uh, of certain products and traces uh, will be convergent for n sufficiently large because you get product of many operators which is to look like roots of a trace class. So the product will be of trace class. Uh, so what parameter n you choose, you choose sufficiently large parameters so things will be convergent. If you change n, n by n plus two, the, the answer will be multiplied by some simple one zero factor. Uh, so. Two pi i maybe something like n. Yeah, so this morally Fred well modules correspond to integer homology classes or better classes in homo homological version of topological case theory. Uh, and, uh, and they should be covariantly constant for guess the Gauss Manning connection. One can write uh, kind of some formal proof if. Uh, 
well, kind of smooth family of the Golu models in certain sense, the certain, again, convergence of stability properties, uh, the pairing with um, covalently constant cluster uh, HP will be constant. Okay, so, so that's some kind of non-commutative machinery, um, uh, presumably producing some numbers. And in fact, it's a really interesting numbers. For example, if my algebra is over rational number, defines over rational numbers, you can uh, get some distinguished set of complex numbers. It contains all periods of algebraic varieties over number fields, but it contains some something more. And um, since my talk started thinking what new numbers you can uh, construct in, in this way. But instead of numbers, one can, it's better really to speak about functions. It's, uh, so we have kind of like one parameter family of periods. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, I recall you that I was interested in this generative series of uh, some traces, uh, AN applied to paren, uh, 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 a genetic series for some element of, a, of an element F algebra, then tau is a reasonable trace function. Yeah, so uh, I recall that in the commutative case, uh, uh, this trace function we construct kind of in two in two steps. So we have certain map multiplication by volume element, whatever it means, and it should be a map from algebra to periodic cyclic homology. And then uh, we should integrate uh, 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 over some integer homology class, so it will trace by some of the volume model. Uh, and this integration of some of the volume model, uh, one can uh, realize. Uh, one can, can localize uh, near something. Uh, so algebraically, I say that we have a homomorphism from algebra to some maybe complete topological algebra, some norms, or norms, or some, some kind of topology. And for the modules is defined for the completion and can, uh, the representation is continuous. Uh, uh, so you'll see some example later on. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what what we do in our commutative case? We get algebra functions, smooth affine algebraic varieties. We have our uh, real cycle, mm. and we represent this by fundamental class of a compact total real submanifold, like uh, this uh, uh, complex numbers are set to what value two to one or n power in the complex doors, and define algebra to the algebra of analytic function in a small Stein neighborhood of this. Uh, uh, Let's see, submanifold Y. So it's really concentrated near Y. And then uh, for sufficient small t, this element one minus T A should be invertible in this completion. It's not invertible in my algebra. Uh, it's no reason, but uh, why it should be invertible? Because uh, on my completion, because the cycle is compact, then uh, uh, my well, let's say, Laurent polynomial restricted to the compact cycle is uniformly bounded. And then for small t, the sum is absolutely convergent. And as this completion is, should be complete with respect to something, which this should also belong to this completion. And then we should apply the whole formalism to multiplication by restriction of volume element to this strand neighborhood and integration to this sum. So uh, in such situation, we expect that the series will be convergence for small t. And uh, how interpret these flat connections? So uh, the goal of my talk to work with those mining connection without writing formals with at all. Uh, so what we do, for example, in this case, uh, we consider algebra as the following global algebra. We take polynomials uh, with, uh, in central variable t, this coefficient is my algebra, and then invert this element, one minus ta. So what, is, what does the formula mean? It means we add to algebra two uh, letters, T and B. T will be central, can be to everything, can be to the elements of A and can be to B. And then B is, is two-sided inverse to one minus TA. Now, so this algebra over, it's algebra over ring of polynomials and non-variable because T is central. So it's kind of bundle of, if in dimensional bundles algebra over a fine line, 
and it has natural flat connection. It's it's uh, oh, again some sound. Okay. Uh, so what does mean this flat connection? As it means that you have a derivation of algebra of center C of T and the derivation naturally leads to this algebra. Uh, when you, uh, it's kind of obvious when you take derivative of this inverse element, you get uh, a something like square, and uh, yes, it still belongs to the same algebra. Uh, so, so you get infinite dimensional bundle uh, in the end out with a flat connection. And then, if you consider any natural linear algebraic construction or functor applied to fibers, then it also carries a flat connection. By natural construction, I mean that you do whatever anything you consider, like uh, a, a, a t divided by a t cube or, or some homology of some complex uh, of some tensor part products of copies of a, uh, a t, and whatever you construct, you, you automatically get a connection. Yeah, so we can apply it to periodic cyclic homology, but even uh, kind of some other constructions like quotient by commutant also gives the modules of the base. Yeah, so it's kind of a very special situation when we get connection uh, session on any functor. And normally, other functors, uh, if you get just family of algebras, not the special type of algebras, uh, they do not provide flat connections. Uh, and uh, HP is kind of designed, uh, was designed for something. Which uh, kind of locally doesn't change if you form continuously algebra. Uh, so, uh, 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 here I have uh, what I said flat connection or one dimensional base. It's, it's kind of meaningless. Any connection is just flat, just connection. But one can consider many parameters. One, for example, we can invert not, not one element, but several elements, but also we can uh, uh, invert elements depending on an arbitrary way on arbitrary parameters. Uh, whatever localization you you do, uh, you get flat connection on this multi-dimensional base. Uh, so in the usual uh, commutative algebraic geometry, uh, what we do, we kind of remove removing divisor for a fine scheme. Uh, yeah, and I find it's kind of really cute way to work with co flat connections uh, when you uh, uh, really interesting kind of like complements to divisors and. That's uh, essentially uh, uh, the way how Griffiths uh, kind of calculated uh, effectively a uh, Hodge filtration on the middle commodity of hypersurface in a uh, projected space. Instead of you do work in a complement, and uh, it became kind of easy. Yeah, so I'll give three examples. Then this uh, genetic series of uh, traces is non trivial and very interesting. Uh, in first two examples, one have very clear interpretation via non commutative geometry, whereas in the third example, uh, nothing is clear. I'm not sure that it's really related to non commutative geometry. But, um, you'll see this kind of interesting questions in, in the third example. So, what is the first example? Mm. Uh, algebra is a quantum torus, let's say two dimensional. We have two invertible variables and x y is equal to q y x. The q is a some constant, complex constant, non zero constant. And for, um, for this um, free volume modules, um, later we'll need the condition set that values q is equal to one. But uh, algebraically, you need just any invertible number. So I consider a functional. Uh, 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 the, Ah, the base of this algebra consists of monomials x to power m and y to power m. Yeah, because uh, you can always put x's on the left, y to the right. And uh, the function will be constant term. It's kind of essentially quantum generalization of this residue which I have on commutative torus. Constant term. Yeah, yeah. So in the commutative limit, when q equal to 1. Uh, this it's this is my residue, so I get a map from algebra to uh, periodic cyclic homology, which is drunk homology, namely by certain unification periodic cyclic homology and drunk homology. You, I just map f to f times b log uh, f b log y and divide by two pi square. Um, later, because the constant is constant coming from integration, integration is over u one squared. And this integration 
can reinforce a new set of trade volume modules. I, I don't want to bother you how it's constructed. So some direct operators on this real manifold. Uh, it's certain construction invented by Korn. And this concrete cycle is supported on this totally real submanifold, which is gives a completion. And when we have deformation by quantum parameter Q, uh, the sets of value one, uh, one gets a similar completion, and uh, there is a kind of what's called quantum uh, infinity torus and uh, uh, this print volume module. So we we'll won't have a version of the same story. And also, the, the periodic cycle commodity will have the same size, so it will also have a similar map. Okay, uh, and the question. Well, suppose we are given some non commutative Laurent polynomial, uh, uh, and what? Uh, so we get the series of non variable. What is it? You know it's convergent, in some, it has some positive radius convergent, but uh, besides that, uh, we have no idea. And uh, uh, the question about this uh, function, I asked myself several years ago, but just for few important reasons. I was trying to make some kind of playground, uh, some example, when I can do some calculation with this pairing between periods and commodity frequent modules concretely. So uh, to get actual numbers and functions and so on. Yeah, so it was really kind of um, uh, not based on any concrete mathematical problem. Uh, but it turns out uh, uh, at the end of the day, this question has much more sense than just an abstract example. So let me give kind of first indication the subset really non trivial and interesting goes on. Yeah, first of all, in this definition, one can forget about the constraint q equal to zero. So you lose convergence, but uh, still get some form power series. So we can treat q as a parameter. Yeah, so the series. Uh, it, 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 we're not sure that series has positive converse. In fact, it will um, not. Yeah, so let's do uh, some very simple simple examples. The simplest interesting example is it's like some of three monomials. And then we can write uh, write a simple computer program and write write uh, see what is going on the series, and we get something. Uh, and is this something that's Pretty interesting. Uh, so you get Laurent polynomials in Q with integer coefficients, uh, all positive here, it's not surprising. The degree of polynomial will be grown quadratically. And uh, so it's, uh, but if you take the sum of all coefficients, you will have exponential growth. Uh, so it looks uh, by all means like quantum Dom's, Dom's invariance of something. So the Challenge is it really have some uh, enumerative geometry meaning? I have no idea. Yeah, so it's kind of like quantum deformations of uh, uh, the series which we um, use in uh, mirror symmetry for fun of our fun of varieties. Of course, it can be high dimensional case and so on, but that's uh, but that's its first example. Yeah, so the second example is a joint project with uh, Alex Söderman. Uh, uh, it's uh, a bit similar but uh, different. The algebra is algebra of micro differential operators. Uh, so what is this? It's considered a form power series in H bar with coefficients in three uh, variables, x and y, non commutic variables. Is the relation says that h bar is central and commutator is equal to h bar. Yeah, so it's linear over the central subalgebra uh, series in h bar. And um, or you can, if you know h bar, you get algebra over fields, if you like prefer fields. Uh, and formula in y that y is h bar d over dx. Mm. So as a module over the series in h bar, algebra. Can be identified just as, as a module with uh, a series and divided with coefficients and commuting variables. Uh, X, com commuting by commuting. Yeah, so it's commuting variables. Um, and the correspondence is given with the following there is a map from commutative version to. Oops. Okay, there is some echo. 
Yeah, but the correspondence is given by the following. If you have monomial and commuting, commuting variables, you go to similar monomial and put X on the left and Y to the right. And this is isomorphism of uh, modules on vector spaces. In fact, one can uh, define uh, it's it's something like quantization of algebra of polynomials into variables, but one can make it certain again completions. And for any Stein open domain in C2, one can define a completion uh, which depends on you, and it's, uh, it's analytic, uh, which is linear over uh, uh, its complete uh, module over uh, series in H bar. And if you consider subsequent portions, you get instead of polynomials, you get algebras of holomorphic functions in, in these domains. Okay. So the framework which I used before I have traces of power sending will be slightly modified, but at the end of the day, it will be not very big difference. Yeah. So we will we'll not have a linear functional on, on the algebra, but rather something else. We have homorphism to completion, uh, like we have before, and, and non trivial functional on the completion. And then we will not something in the completion. Um, you'll see later. Yeah, so so uh, what are what will be our um, mm, uh, completions and functionals? Uh, so for any open Stein domain and in C2 and for any integer homology class in second homology, uh, we have a, a linear map of a series in H bar. So it's a trace function not based on C but in, in, in series in H bar. For this uh, quantized algebra in formal sense, given by the following way. If you get, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I recall you get uh, this isomorphism for commutative non commutative, and it's, it's also work for, completed, for the completed case. And uh, what we do, we can, if you have an element of non commutative algebra, it's come from by the is, isomorphism of some element in commuting letters. Uh, so holomorphic function in uh, commuting letters, then we multiply by symplectic volume, standard symplectic volume form, uh, and integrate over the cycle. Now, so it's, it will be trace functional. And there are three results about this functional. So first, it vanishes on commutators. It's actually, it's false from uh, checking if you how Star product looks like, and uh, it, it, identification with functions and commutative variables, and you see that you get uh, the exact uh, forms on the right. Uh, uh, the next uh, uh, result is if you quotient algebra by commutators, but also if you divide commutators by h bar, because the commutators divisible by h bar, so it will be still part of my algebra. Uh, uh, by integration with these traces, when we put uh, gamma i ramps to the basis of second homology, we identify the second homology of my domain with coefficients in uh, series in h bar. So again, just proof kind of step by step. Uh, it's uh, an easy result. And the soap, I think it's a little bit more um, fine. Uh, if consider commutator space, uh, it's inside with a very larger space when uh, you do the following. You consider Arbitrary derivation of uh, of this quantum algebra and apply to arbitrary element. Uh, this commutators um, appear when we get inner derivations divided by h bar, uh, so you get a larger space, but it's the same space. Yeah, so it's uh, in the, in a semi classical limit. You say that if my function is uh, uh, application of uh, Hamiltonian vector fields in domain to some function to my domain. Uh, and in part by omega get trivial homology class, which is a very easy calculation. Uh, so it's a bit uh, more fine property. Uh, yeah, so get uh, this, this definition of this functional, uh, and it's uh, kind of invariant under infinitesimal automorphisms, derivations. Uh, so it's not literally coming from pairing with a free volume module because pairing gives just complex numbers, not series, but it definitely has a flavor of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, so now let uh, my algebra be, um, my element will be polynomial differential operator depending on small parameter bar. So the example which we kind of eventually want to study in the very details, it's uh, something which Jean Justin, Jean Justin looked uh, about quite a long time, about 40 years ago. It's a harmonic oscillating the double well potential. So you get the separator uh, just on the real line and in the classical limit, uh, and you want to study its spectrum. So we want to uh, do kind of some algebraic understanding of the spectrum. <coughs> so first of all, in the classical limit, we get a polynomial map from C2, these coordinates are called X classical, Y classical. They look the same as like X commutative, Y commutative, but kind of play different roles. So there are limits of from X, Y to C, uh, given by just you replace it with minus y, y classical square, plus x square, classical square minus one squared. Uh, and the coordinate on C, it will be, I'll call it E, it will be energy, it's eigenvalues of uh, my Hamiltonian. Uh, so we get a polynomial map, its fibers are affine curves. And on this affine curves, I get uh, one form, I have symplectic form and divided by differential of uh, this function A classical. So I get a family of curves uh, end out with one forms. And what, what I have, I have a section of the holomorphic bundle, uh, namely, I consider bundle whose homology is the homology of the fiber with integer coefficients, it has bundle local system of integers, of integers with web connections, then complexify it and take, get a holomorphic section. Uh, this homomorphic section will have some singularities at single fiber, so I should uh, forget uh, critical values of this A classical. And then using uh, uh, some series of normal forms, uh, again, kind of analog of uh, uh, in quantum case, uh, we took this Alexander uh, uh, introduce quantum analogs of angle momentum coordinates in some tube domains. Uh, I don't want to buzz in these details. Uh, yeah, uh, it's something like Darbu theorem uh, in a sense in, in quantum. Uh, 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 framework, and then we defined a quantum deformation of this uh, this uh, section as classical. So to have some series of informal parameters uh, of holomorphic sections of the same local system. Uh, again, the singularities of critical values, which allows to calculate h bar expansion of the low part of the spectrum of actual kind of physical problem. Uh, you get uh, this uh, self adjoint operator at Cornell two. Uh, H bars will be some actual small positive number. It will have some spectrum and uh, it has a symmetric expansion and that may actual trans series eventually. And we want to understand this the story and mm. we kind of deduce to some question about this quantum periods. Okay. So what is a, a new observation? Uh, one can recast the definition of quantum periods in terms of trace maps, which I introduced before, in some replacement homemade theory of quantum angle variables by another homemade uh, yeah, theory of uh, pairings with Fredgoli modules, which are not exactly Fredgoli modules, but definitely looks more scientific. Mm. So, what are key points? Uh, so, if you have a non critical value of uh, this classical Hamiltonian, we define the associated Stein domain in, uh, to be the following. Right, take the complement to, um, to this uh, uh, classical level set. The residue, uh, yeah, so it's according, to, it really fits to this uh, philosophy which we consider complement to moving devices. Mm. So the residue maps, maybe map gives identification of second commode of this complement and first commode of fi the fiber. So. This quantum periods can be considered as periods of uh, the second commode of the complement. And then, we can, and then we have a trace, which I described before, applied to this uh, one over A minus P. E, uh, so it will be definitely invertible element of, of, on this complement. It's coincided with the quantum period. 
and how it, you probably you use this part zero. This zero is kind of a little bit more delicate part about derivations, not linear derivations, uh, because we change coordinates to apply this normal forms. So I apply to angle momentum columns on some uh, tricky domains of the product of two annular embedded into this complement. Yeah, so there's some kind of interesting geometry here goes on, but then we can identify uh, these quantum periods from normal forms to quantum periods coming from the traces. And finally, when uh, just a trivial remark, if you divide one over a minus this number e, it's proportional to one minus constant times a, it is e inverse. So it's really looks exactly like our frame, general framework. We get some completion, get trace and completion, get one minus t a reversible the completion and uh, calculate it. Okay. Yeah, so now I go to the final part of my story. It's this mysterious example three. So the algebra is now it has completely different nature. It's a group ring of the free finite generic group. Oh, the same as Laurent polynomials in kind of non commuting variables, not Q commuting, just free non commuting. The trace function is similar to what we had before. It's a, a, a element of this uh, group ring is a finite linear combination of elements of the group. We take the contribution of, of identity element, okay, constant term. So if my variables will be commuted, it will be exactly this uh, constant term of usual Laurent polynomial. And there are uh, really nice things about this uh, story. It was uh, this old theory by Schutzenberger and Chomsky, uh, older than this story, actually, that for any element of the algebra, if you take this genetic series, you get algebraic series in one variable. Uh, yeah, it's very uh, peculiar result. So it was color of zero formal grammars and uh, uh, sort of algebraic series in free variables. Uh, what they uh, developed, they de uh, accepted should some very developed, uh, uh, shows a series of algebraic series in free variables. And then uh, uh, there's also notion of rational series and then there's notion of Adamar product and Adamar product of rational algebraic series of algebraic, that's the main result. And then if you go to abelianization, you get algebraic series in commuting variable eventually. In one variable. Yeah, about 10 years ago, I proved a certain improvement of this result of Chomsky, uh, which is the following. You take different, it's like different uh, gadget. You take exponent of some of n greater than one, as this trace applied to power a to power n, divide by n and multiply to q power n. So the whole series is again algebraic. It implies the algebraic of previous series because you take derivative of logarithm of this guy got the previous guy. Uh, the result was really very, very crazy. I I use uh, the combination of this result of Chudzubiri and Chomsky and another result by um, Chudnovsky, Chudnovsky from 84 in um, kind of number theory about a special class of Grotendieck uh, conjecture uh, about differential equations. And miraculously, things works very well together and get this result, which is Absolutely ineffective. So up to now, people in Kubernetes are puzzled how to prove it uh, in kind of a constructive way. For example, we have no idea what is the degree of this algebraic function. You can no even estimate that. It's a pretty abstract uh, statement. Yeah, but I will not dwell on this topic. Uh, so the simplest example which you can uh, look for is. Uh, like, like consider this free group and consider some of all generators some inverses of generators. Uh, so, um, and this is a generic series, something like uh, random walks on some regular tree which should uh, return to the origin, something like this. And, uh, and then, uh, the generic series is very easy to calculate, it's known for I mean, decades. Yeah, it's, it's some algebraic function. And, um, and again, this my contract, you get another algebraic function. Uh, but my theorem, I get another algebraic function. But uh, my theorem gets a certain radius of convergence here, convergence here. And then 
you get uh, the following question. Uh, let's consider algebra with depending one one complex parameter E, which is the following. We have this um, uh, group algebra or free group, non commutative Floran polynomials, and add two sided inverse to this expression. The sum of ui, ui inverse minus this energy value of whatever it means, inverse. Uh, does something special happens with periodic cyclic homologous algebra when is uh, energy is plus minus two square root of two k minus one this what is the inverse of root of this symbolic of the series it's definitely true for k equal one and uh and a very interesting challenge to see uh, if for k equal two and so on you get some kind of algebraic something which happens for this e and you see that HP jumps. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Does this functional have any non commutative natural non commutative meaning? So I don't have any print volume module, uh, and I don't know what the web from algebra to period set homology. Yes, yeah, so it's very shaky grounds here. But in certain sense, the answer is yes, and it comes from free probability theory. So let's uh, this is also a very old result by Dan Vekulescu, uh, which is the following. Let's consider this uh, hard measure on the unitary group uh, UN where n is very large. Uh, so it will be hard measure and normalize so to have total mass one. So it will be probability measure, random, uniformly distributed unitary matrix. Now, if you have any work in this uh, variables uh, in this letters ui to power plus minus one, you can apply to independent, uh, um, equally distributed, uh, uniform distributed unitary matrices. So you get again some um, big random unitary matrix, take trace of it, divide by n, uh, and uh, looks at the mean value of this guy. And uh, in the theorem of Kolesko said that it's, if uh, this expression is trivial, if identity matrix, then of course you get one. Trace of an energy matrix is one divided by n, you get one. So this mean value is one. But if uh, if this word is non trivial element in, the, in this group, then the limit will be zero, uh, which is not surprising. Uh, yeah, so um, our algebra, uh, this group algebra free group, is a star algebra. Uh, I have, uh, uh, and anti involution, anti holomorphic anti involution on generators de defined its each generators is kind of unitary, its emission conjugate its inverse to itself. And the corollary of this uh, Rikulescu theorem is that it's for any self adjoint element like this uh, uh, sum of ui plus ui inverse, it's self adjoint. Uh, there exists a unique probability measure on the real line with compact support, subject for any n. The one has the following the nth moment of this measure is this function functional tau applied to nth power of element a. So this is kind of famous tiltiest -tilt problem for which sequences of numbers you can there are moments of probability distributions and it's complex support and there are some nice answers. And this claim is here, so will be automatic. And the proof is really uh, one line. Uh, so if you have Hermitian matrix of size n by n, which constructed by our expressions within two matrix, say, uh, we are sort to the probability measures on R with finite support. Uh, uh, we consider sum of delta functions eigenvalues and make uh, average of sense of probability measure. Uh, then uh, if, you, if you look uh, what is tau a to power n by the theorem, it's the limit of n moment of this random probability measures. Yeah, so you get something tricky. Uh, it's kind of uh, uh, twice randomness. You get a run, uh, uh, probability distribution, the space of probability distributions in real life. Uh, but, uh, but in fact, when n goes to infinity, uh, uh, you get kind of distinguished, uh, uh, you lose second randomness. Mm -hmm. And the story is, is that if you consider any expression uh, in my. Um, uh, variables take 
the self-adjunct expression will just be met by any expression. Take trace of it and divide by n, we get a random real or complex variable, uh, real expression self-adjoint. And the claim that n goes to infinity, it goes to non-random constant. And so this random probability measure uh, uh, tends to certain definite probability measure with compact support with n moment equal to this uh, uh, trace a to power n. Yeah, so it's kind of pretty neat, simple uh, probabilistic uh, interpretation of what goes on. And actually, I realized it so recently, a kind of couple of months ago. Uh, the story. So, uh, first of all, what I'm going to reformulate our algebraicity uh, properties. Uh, so, this Chomsky Schutzen Berger result uh, it means that if you integrate all this probability uh, density with compact support on real line 1 over 1 minus dx, you get algebraic function for small t. It's convergent for small t because it has compact support. It's kind of still defined. And, uh, and this similar result of mine, it's uh, you replace one on one minus take the log one minus x. It's again not a rate for small t. Okay. And now, this, so these are two algebraicities. Second is stronger than the first one. But, and now a new brand new conjecture. That's the third algebraicity, which is doesn't imply it's, it's no logical relation with first two. Then the density itself is also algebraic. It's piecewise algebraic function. Yeah, so it's a bit more complicated topic. Before we have germs of algebraic, algebraic functions in zero, but here piecewise algebraic, so it will be maybe on several uh, real lines, will be decomposed on several literals, so will be different functions on different intervals. Uh, in fact, it already happens in the case when we have just one variable. Uh, if you imagine that uh, you get Laurent, a real Laurent polynomial in one variable, a real value of uh, trigonometric polynomial in a unit circle, it maps unit circle to R. And they get different number of faults, different domains. So that the image of, uh, of the measure, uh, the theta will be kind of piecewise algebraic. Yeah, I don't have even a heuristic explanation for the story, just a few examples. I'll uh, show some, some later. But uh, uh, what is possible is that uh, the whole story will have some uh, non commutative explanation. Maybe for this bundle of algebras, which I considered. Uh, I, I recall we have this already equation for this bundle of algebras. Uh, when I invert, remove constant to invert the things, what goes on with periodic cyclic homology? I really have no idea, but it's, it's uh, what all the story suggests, it's maybe this bundle is finite rank and the monogram is also finite. So this, uh, whatever we have with the calculation, it end, uh, we will end with algebraic functions. That will be a really wonderful explanation of this combinatorial result, but uh, that I don't know. Yeah, I, I will explain a little, a little bit different uh, uh, version of, uh, of this previous story. And there's another probability measure on matrices, of course, Gaussian unitary ensemble, but it's measured on not unitary matrices, but on Hermitian matrices. Uh, so you have Hermitian matrix, the space of Hermitian matrices is R to one square, we have natural. Uh, the back uh, measure, the n square. Then we can consider Gaussian measure, x point minus n times 3 x square over 2, and divide by constant to make it probability distribution. Yeah, so now uh, I will, uh, my algebra now will be free algebra. This start structure uh, uh, such as each generator is self adjoint. And I, I have now a different trace. Mm. It comes from uh, kind of integration with respect to Gaussian measure. Uh, trace of any word is a number of non coercing pairing for the word. Right. So let's do a very simple example. Consider what x1, 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 x2, x3, x3, 2. Uh, then I can pair uh, uh, ones and two and threes in two ways, uh, non coercing ways. So three paired with three, two, two, two paired with two. But you have two, four ones, and as you pair first two and second two, or pair middle two and the uh, kind of ambient bracket of ones, yeah, first and fourth. Yeah, so this uh, this notion of coarsing, uh, non-coarsing pairings, 
uh, and it comes from some vehicles. Uh, you can see the trace of a product of uh, Hermitian matrices divided by n, and you can see the mean value to get, go to this number of unforced pairings. And then uh, one can kind of essentially repeat the story, and then for any self adjoint element, one gets a limiting distribution uh, of eigenvalues of random uh, uh, non Gaussian Hermitian matrix, some expression in independent Hermitian matrix, and the moments are given by this new trace applies to power of my element in my new algebra. So uh, uh, this is theorem as before. This genetic series has algebraic for t equal less than t is equal to one. And the proof is, uh, um, it's not in Chomsky's description, but the proof is um, kind of follows from the same logic. Uh, this non-crossing pairings generate algebraic series in non commuting variables. And then we, we use uh, uh, this, this technology, this Adamar product, and so on. And you have the same proof. But this exponential generalization, unfortunately, doesn't work. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of um, not so nice uh, as unitary ensemble. Uh, but still, uh, the density seems to be piecewisely uh, the same conjecture that density is piecewise algebraic uh, seems to be true. Yeah, uh, now I finish with uh, uh, kind of just the first baby example. We have just one uh, Hermitian matrix with Gaussian distribution. And then uh, this genetic series for uh, for these traces satisfies this quadratic equation, it's actually a sequence of Catalan numbers. And the density is uh, Wigner semicircle law supported on interval from minus two to two, and given by this algebraic density, one over pi and multiplied by this algebraic function. And the graph is, is a half circle, so it's called semicircle law. But now if you have two matrices and take the anti commutator x1 and x2. One can again calculate this G, uh, the genetic function, satisfies a little bit more complicated uh, equation, but very similar to what we had before. And the density, to my surprise, is again algebraic. I calculate self moment problem, it was. Uh, Easy, but not very easy. It's supported to some interval of very strange lengths, square root of 11 plus 5, whatever solution of this quadratic equation. And, uh, and the density is uh, given by 1 over pi, like in previous case, multiplied by some mass of break function to solve again for sort of equation. Yeah, yeah, so it's uh, kind of really brand new result. Uh, so the people matrix random matrices never been so far to this question and uh, then one can check it some computer first one calculates the graph of density it's really compact support with it not semicircle but this uh, graph of the shape and then it took two random matrices of very large size 2000 for example they can take mutator calculate can well get and get a histogram for again where you see this really fits very well so it's so it, definitely I didn't make any mistake in this calculation. So, no? Okay, now and now I finish as it's kind of like an optimistic note. It's about it's completely crazy suggestion, it's potential relation to ground feature invariance. So it was strange commercial again with words and so on. Yeah. So let's uh, recall what, what we have in matrix models. In usual matrix models. What we do, we take, uh, we replace the Gaussian ensemble by something more complicated, trace of x squared plus x to the power four, something like this. So we get some Gibbs measures, exponent minus n times trace of some polynomial and divide by appropriate partition function, get probability measure, and then look uh, what I distribution of eigenvalues uh, of this round of Hermitian matrices. This can be solved in a planar limit when n goes to infinity via periods of some hyperelliptic spectral curves. And hence, you get variation of host structures of certain non compact three dimensional color wave varieties. But then for finite n, you get a uh, slightly different uh, uh, distribution, slightly different correlators, and you get corrections of type n to power 2 minus 2g, which eventually can be identified with high genus ground fit invariance of the mirror dual local three color wave. It's kind of famous uh, prediction by Dagger and Waffle. Yeah, so. so so in kind of large and limit, we, we see the, this high genus, uh, this string theory kind of for free. 
But now with non commutative polynomials of random commission or unitary matrices, we obtain a new type of eigenvalue distributions, which are much more amenable to explicit calculation, not in making an experience Monte Carlo simulations. And this, uh, yeah, so, but it's in large and limit. And uh, but one can also try to calculate correction for finite term. And there is a kind of non zero chance, uh, even that it's possible, that finite term correction could kept against some enumerative geometry meaning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's first take questions from people uh, here and then uh, are there any questions? Uh, I, I have a question. Uh, in all examples which you showed today, uh, do you have sort of periods of the volume form on non, maybe non commutative collagial? Yeah, yeah. So and uh, and you always have a variation of which structure to reduce this period of section. Something yeah. Like okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, uh, at least what I talk about, I get some uh, uh, section of associated holomorphic bundle plus of some form, uh, which is probably part of uh, hot filtration. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since the title you, you, you said it's calculations with gets to Gauss. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, I never really done any calculation with, <laughs> with the definition uh, per se. Uh, I said that the, for, for, for such special family of algebras, for any factor, whatever periodic cycle can or anything, you do calculation in the same manner to take derivatives. And uh, my guess it's related to periodic cycle homology in this case, but I don't know exactly how. And, and your example was quantum torus. Uh, do you have any algebraic Since you mentioned that it's standard. Ah, no algebraic. No, I think it will be infinite rank for relation. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, any questions from? From people in Zoom, you you probably can unmute yourself and ask a question. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thank Maxim for three very exciting lectures.